Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel for you guys today. I'm going to be my review, my opinion on the latest re Resident Evil remake within the Resident Evil, like, well, it's trying to redo it because the latter half of the Paul W.S. Anderson films has turned into dumb, slow-mo, Matrix-style, rip-off, slow type of dumb movies. And there isn't... I wouldn't say there's an audience for it, but there's an... I wouldn't say there's an audience for those films, but I could at least see that those films were, like, so bad, they were good. But I could see that for the first two to three Paul and Tobias Anderson films. The first one, back in 2002, a sequel in, a sequel in 2004, and then the third, which was kind of like a Mad Max film, and that released back in 2007, I could at least, in, I could at least gleefully enjoy those three films to a certain degree. The animated films? The three animated films are worthy to own. And they are actually not half bad and uh, not half bad, actually visually fun aesthetic films, even if we know these the story at the core of all these films will never be done truly well because they don't understand the heartbeat of what makes it so good. And what may make them look better as a video game as if as a cinematic piece. But I'll tell you something about this movie. Um I was gonna review this movie a few days ago. And I'm glad I sat and I I'm glad I saw that and let myself Compose myself and get and for you guys here giving a much more coherent, structured, and more honest review, rather than a a pure video ranting and staging on how much the movie made me angry. And it did. I'm not. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Uh, this movie really pissed me off. And um, I realized I was probably alone on that. I was probably the only person who thought this could be good because I remember seeing the trailers back then, back in uh, I think it was October, and I said to myself, "I'm like, yeah, that actually looks. It may look absurd and dumb, but at least it had some essence there, like the atmosphere." <laughs> but I found myself realizing the best response to a film like this is to offer cr criticisms in the best way imaginable. To instead of drive this movie into the ground with a spike is to give sincere constructive criticism to the film. And here's what I do like about this movie. I like the cast. I mean, I mean, I wasn't the overall cast, but everyone in the movie does a fine job. And the second thing I do like about the movie is the overall sense of action wasn't, was Okay, it was a fine. It was just an average. And the third thing, um, I did enjoy the overall aesthetic. I appreciate it was trying to do something different within this mood and approach and everything. And the last thing I did like about this movie, it was the only thing I could say more than just an industry standard, like, you know, decent acting, not not half-assed, you know, not bad, like, um cinematography and everything like that. Of course. Of course you're going to get it right. It's an industry standard. This isn't... Um, <laughs> this isn't like a student film where you're cringing through but you appreciate the craftsmanship. Like, no, this is a this is a produced film. Millions of dollars went to this film for a reason. Um, the only person who I, I thought actually embodied the role well enough was, um, let me get this straight. It is Robbie Armel as Chris Redfield. He's the only person in this movie who I thought, from a both a visual standpoint, a character standpoint, the um, his role in the story, and the performance, I actually thought was actually pretty good. And I'm like, yeah, that actually kind of hits a nail for the character Chris, of Chris Redfield. He's the protective older brother, but... Strong, loyal, and stubborn, but very loyal. And he's, um, but he's also kind of a bit more blind to his faults. He's kind of like a Leon 2.0 in a way. I'll get the Leon in a minute. 
Um, but my, my problem with the general cast in this movie is that they're just kind of going through the motions of it all. Like, it's just kind of there and it's fine. Like, both the, the character of Jill Valentine and Claire Redfield are are completely indistinguishable. Like, granted, as I said, their performances were okay. They were, they were fine. I appreciate what they were both going through thematically within the story. But nothing about the performances made me realize, like, it was, like... Something that really took on. Like, this film felt like it was made by someone who was forced to. It was not like a passion project. It wasn't like someone who owed the film. Like, it was like, oh yeah, I want to make a new Resident Evil movie because I have a real drive and idea. It's like, no, you can tell the director, the director of the film, Johannes Roberts, um, who also did 47 meters, 47 meters down and that unfortunate sequel. Which, granted, I have never seen those films. I have no desire to see them. They look dumb. Um, and, um, to be fair, to be honest and to be fair, you know about this film? I was not expecting a lot. But, at the very least, I was expecting something. Because I am a fan of the Resident Evil lore and everything. And the movie presents itself in a very crass, yeah, Raccoon is a bit of a dumb, and we all have a bit of an attitude about it, but we somewhat defend it. Like, when you present the tone of the story, and the, and the mood, and the environment as like, yeah, whatever, you know, type of approach, then you fail to make me care in the first place for why the stakes are important, and why the characters being done rep represented in an honorable way matters, because none of them were done all that much to justice. The only thing I thought as I said before, the only one who I thought was done at all remotely good was Chris Redfield. He was good enough. Jill and Val Jill Valentine and as I said, and Claire Redfield were completely indistinguishable. Krauser was just weird and I don't understand why they did that. Oh, oh, god damn. What the hell did they do to Leon? What the hell did they do to my favorite character in the entire series? They made him the butt of the joke. He, the way they treated his character was so reprehensible and dissatisfying in all the wrong ways. I don't know why they did that. He was just like, look, I really like Adam Andromeda. I really do. I've been following his career since Victorious. But he and uh, he does not look like Leon. And they just and if they just they didn't go remote. They, and if they were just going to go towards this character and be like, hey, Carlos, because there's a, he kind of does fit the, uh, the, the character of Carlos from the game. Uh, is he's trying to shape in the story of Resident Evil, the first two games. And I'm like, oh, no. Like, all the red flags were there. And again, I was like, you know, I wasn't blinded, but I was at least hopeful. My friends warned me about this movie, and they're like, no, don't. Don't get your hopes up. And I'm like, no, it could be something special. But apparently, no one wants to make a good Resident Evil movie. I mean, none. Of, I mean, none of them. I'm gonna say straight up, are genuinely good. Even the three fucking CGI films that I actually do rather enjoy, aren't good movies. They're at least enjoyable. They're at least tolerable, dumb sci-fi horror action films. To, uh, but at least they at least stuck to the core of what made Resident Evil was in the first place. And to say this film is better than, as I said, and again, it's, it's like it's better than a good half of the Paul W. S. Anderson films, but that's not a big standard. Like, like I wanted, I want someone to make a original movie that felt sincere, real, and above all, like really coming from the heart, like making a genuinely well structured, well paced. Movie that honored the source material, honored the characters, and understanding a good story for what makes it takes underneath. And frankly, and let's be real about something. If you've seen this movie, if you remember the chief um, leader of the police, he's like, everything's kind of going to ha kind of going to hell, and he's like, yeah, whatever. See you guys in the afterlife or whatever. And he just kind of buggers off, and he literally like quits. And I'm like, if you can't make him care, like, granted, he, his character wasn't meant to be great in the first place, but I'm like, 
the film is just kind of presenting itself in this, yeah, really lazy, sardonic, you know, in this really passive, who cares attitude, then the movie fails to make me understand why I should care in the first place. To understand the stakes. When it doesn't honor a goddamn lick of what makes Resident Evil work in the first place. And perhaps, it, and you know what, I'm not, um, I remember there being a series this year as well. But perhaps, I was too hopeful. Perhaps I gave this movie too much faith. And frankly, by the time the movie ended, I ran, I ran out of the ran, I ran out of the theater like it was on fire. Like I was just like at the time I was just so angry and upset about the movie. But I'm glad talking about this movie here now. It's like it's a bit more off my chest. And even if I get anything wrong, if anyone wants to correct me on anything, please do. I offer that completely. If I'm wrong about something, please tell me. Um, I'm not perfect, but at the very least, uh, like I really wanted this to be something special. I believed in it, and but it's like, well, you got to look down. Yeah, but that's an inter is it? Yeah, but that's an industry standard. Of course, you need to have decent acting. Of course, you have, need to have a good looking set. That is that just enough to get the bare atmosphere right, more right than a, any of the Paul W. S. Anderson films. Which universally suck? Spare me. Like, no. No. Uh, and yes, I have already, and I, yes, I have, I, um, unfortunately, I have seen uh, No Time to Die, and I have not uploaded that review at all. But I'm going to, around the same time when I upload this. Um, like, yeah. Like, perhaps I personally, like, mentally, Calm down from seeing this movie, but it's like <laughs> it's kind of like that incredible whole thing where it's like, "Hey Jack, welcome to Wrecking, Resident Evil, welcome to well, Resident, Resident Evil, welcome to Wrecking City," and it's kind of go, you know, like <laughs> it just puts a wrong taste in the mouth. Like it doesn't understand the bare minimum of what makes the franchise understandably good in the first place. It's the last Jedi of Resident Evil movies. And that's saying someone, and it's really fucking saying something from someone who really hated The Last Jedi. And how that movie essentially betrays anything of how, how any, of what made Star Wars good in the first place at all. Like, like I'm over this movie. Like, I, like when I went, like, I thought it was going to be hard to top the Injustice movie. I really thought it was going to be something very difficult to talk to film about how much I didn't like that movie. But it did it. I hate this movie more than the Injustice film. It, it's the worst film I've seen of the year. No worst films of the year for me. It's just the worst. Yeah. Fuck this movie.